In this video, I want to introduce you to Google Gemini. That's Google's AI chatbot, and it's available to use completely for free. And this is the direct competitor that Google rolled out back in 2023 to compete with ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot. Now to access it, you just go to the website gemini.google.com and here just click sign in and use your Google email to sign into your Google account. In this video, I'm going to cover all the useful functions of Google Gemini and I'm also going to share with you some prompting techniques to make it a lot more useful for your day to day tasks. Now, inside of Gemini here, the first thing I'll show you is right up here. If you click here, you'll see two different options. One is called Gemini. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. But they have this other one called Gemini Advanced. This one requires a paid subscription. At the time that I'm recording this, this is $20 a month. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, Gemini right here is powered by an AI engine called Gemini Pro. So you won't see that here. There's no text that says Gemini Pro, but Gemini Pro is basically the background engine that is running this one. Gemini Advanced though uses a different type of an AI called Gemini Ultra. Now that's their highest, most capable model. So this is going to give you a little bit of a better answer. It's going to have some other functionality that the free version here won't have. But for the most part, the free version is going to cover the needs of most people. I do have a dedicated Gemini advanced video that you could watch after this to see what this one is all about. And from time to time, you may see something called Google Bard. So this Google Gemini used to be called Google Bard when they first rolled it out, but they rebranded it here to Gemini. So you won't hear the word Bard anymore. Now you have two ways to use Gemini. If you come over here to the left side, you'll have a settings option. And with the settings option, you could actually turn on and off real time responses. What does this mean exactly? Well, right now, Gemini, if you type in a text prompt right down here, it could use the Internet data to answer your question. So it would search the web if that option is turned on. But if you actually turn this off, this is actually still usable because Google Gemini was trained with a whole large set of data. So it has a huge library of information. It doesn't have to go to the web to answer your question. So if you're doing writing, it's actually useful sometimes if you turn it off so it won't do any web searches. But if you're using it for research, it's really important to turn this on so it has up to date Internet data. Again, this is by Google, so it's going to have the most relevant data available. And here on the left side, you'll see any recent conversation that you've had with Gemini. So you could always pull these back up and continue that conversation. Now here I just press new chat. It created this blank chat for me and I'm going to cover a bunch of different prompting options and more advanced functionality as I go through the rest of this video. Now, the first prompt I'm going to show you is for writing. So when you're doing anything that relates to doing some research and then using it to write content, blog posts and things like that, this is a very handy tool with all this up to date information through Google. So here's a prompt and I'll include all these in the description below this video. I'm writing a blog post about here's a little placeholder. So let me go ahead and fill this out about generative AI, which is what Google Gemini falls into. Find and summarize three to five relevant and credible sources on this topic based on your finding, create a detailed outline for the blog post structure, include sections for introduction, key points, supporting arguments and conclusion. So usually you don't want to just to write the whole thing off the first prompt. You want to kind of think of this in order. So this is a little bit more advanced prompting technique, but this is how I use it as a writing partner. Now, when you send out a prompt, if you just press enter, it's going to give you this response. So few things to pay attention to when it's responding to you, it still looks like it's writing it. So there we go. We got our sources. So this is very useful. It looks like it pulled from three, four different links here. And if we click on any of those links, we could go to that very specific website. So this is a great way to use it for pulling sources. If I come to the top, you could see based on this prompt. So the better you could give a prompt, the better response you're going to get. This whole art of formulating a prompt like this is called prompt engineering. I'll share some resources at the end of the video if you really want to dive into prompt engineering and crafting these prompts, not just a simple one sentence prompt. You could always edit your text here if you didn't get an answer and update it and it will give you a brand new answer. Here are a few really useful options right here. Show more draft. Every time Google Gemini responds to you, 
it will give you three different drafts and they're all available for you. So you could quickly see how it's altered the answer every single time. I love this three draft options. It gets created every single time this answers. If you press this, you could listen to it out loud. It has a really nice voice here that it will read this for you. And if I go to the bottom, you could actually rate it. So this is just training Google Gemini. You don't have to worry about this one, but this one is one of my favorite options. If you click this, let's say this is just far too long and I just want a more short answer here. And it's gonna give it the same prompt, but this time it's gonna know to answer in a shorter way. So it's gonna cut the answer probably in half. There we go, it cut it in half. This time I did lose my sources though. So sometimes that does happen. You could also make it simpler, more casual, more professional, just with one click. You could always do this with a follow-up prompt too. So if you're new to prompting, every time you get an answer like this, you could say, make it simpler. And that simple text is gonna give you a simpler version of that answer, okay? So you could always use it that way, but I do like this option over here just to click once. Now, another option you have is you could share it. So the share option basically creates a link that shows the prompt and the response, and it could create a public link for you, and you just share that link with anyone. That is extremely useful. You could also share the entire chat you want. So not just that one prompt and one response, but the entire chat history on this very specific chat. You could also export it to Google Docs, and you could also draft a Gmail. I'll show you this one in the email section. But to export it to Docs, click here. It's created that document down here, press open. And there you go, it took us directly to Google Docs. And we have exactly what we created inside of Gemini now as a Google Docs document that we could share with anyone. And you could always press this little double check response. This is useful. So if you're new to this whole world of AI with Gemini and ChatGPT, sometimes these models do something called hallucination. They make up the answer. It doesn't exist. This lets you double check that answer. So if you click it, it basically does a quick search. And then right here, it says understanding the results and it will go and find information. In this case, it wasn't very relevant because I'm not doing research. I'm using it as a writing partner, but this is a very useful option to know about. And you could always copy the entire response from here as well. Okay, now if I want to draft text for the blog based on the outline it created for me, I could go ahead and have it do the entire blog post for me and it's gonna go to work. Now, it's important that you just don't copy and paste this blog, but if you really wanted a longer blog, you could just make it longer. You could tell it, write a thousand word blog, but I usually do it in sections. So I get the outline and then I flush out each section with a little bit of help. I use it as a writing assistant rather than an AI that writes the whole thing for me because everybody could do that your content is not really going to stand out if you do it that way. Okay, let's start a new chat. In this second option, I wanna show you email copy and exporting it to Gmail. Okay, here's the prompt that I'm gonna share with you again in the description. I need you to write an email to a potential client about this product or service, briefly explain the benefits, and conclude with a call to action. So you really could flush out these prompts as much as you want to. I just left placeholders for you so you could quickly type in your own. So it's gonna do everything. It's gonna write the subject. It's gonna have a placeholder. In this case, I didn't give it the client's name. And here's the email. It's kind of long, right? So in this case, I'm gonna do a quick, shorter version. Oh, there we go. It cut it basically in half. And remember, you also have your other drafts that you could quickly check. And do make sure you read through it to make sure it's all good. But in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and send it to my Gmail. So draft the Gmail, open Gmail down here, it pops up. And there you go, we have the subject. So I will have to put the subject right in this box instead. So I could copy this over, put this over here, and I could delete it from over here. And any placeholder text that he left here, obviously fill that out. But you could quickly go through this, make any adjustments, fill in any blanks, type in the recipients, and send it. This is a very, very time-saving way to have a draft of an email that AI helped you write that you could then customize and put your finishing touches to rather than doing everything from scratch. Now, while we're talking about email, I do wanna show you this other setting option right here called extensions. Now here you're gonna see five extensions. They rolled this out with five extensions. I'm assuming they're gonna add more to it. But since we're talking about email, I wanted to talk about this extension right here, Google Workspace. What it could do is it could access with Gemini Everything inside of your Gmail, your entire Google Drive and your Google Docs, summarize it, help you get quick responses. So let me show you here with a new chat. 
If you type something like, did I get any emails this week? It uses the Google Workspace extension here and accesses your email. And right now, he went and find the eight emails I got just today and he pulled them in and he summarized every single one. I'm just blurring it here because this is my actual email. These are just private information, but it's incredible how quickly you could sift through everything in your Google workload, right? Everything in your Gmail, everything in your Google Drive, it could get pulled in with that simple extension. That might be the best useful part of Google Gemini so far, in my opinion. Now, the next thing you could do is you could use it as a research tool. So let's say I'm writing a report about this industry, right? So you fill this blank here. Find as summarized recent industry reports, article focusing on key trends and so on. So I'm going to type in generative AI. That's what I'm writing about. And by the way, you could always press this microphone option and speak your prompt into it as well. So this is an option that you could press before you press submit. But I typed that out here from my prompt list. And here we got a full detailed breakdown about the generative AI market. So market growth here is going to be a very massive $43 billion market, it looks like. You got key trends here. You have challenges, growth opportunities, emerging technology, and a little conclusion section. And as always, all the options, or if you want to follow up with a text prompt, I'm going to ask it to tell me more about the growth opportunities here. So you could have a back and forth conversation here. And as I'm recording this, there is no limit on how often you could use this. Gemini is free, and there's no limit in the usage of it. So you could have a back and forth conversation as long as you want till you get a really refined research here with the answers. Now, next, I want to show you Gemini's other functionality besides just writing. It could actually detect images. It has vision built into it. Google is one of the first companies to build this AI long time ago into their phones and into Google Photo. I'm just going to ask what is this and see what kind of information it gives me. Right now, as I'm recording this, it does have problem with detecting people. So if you upload a picture that has a person in it, it might give you an error message here. So this image is an advertising for an advanced chat GPT course. And let's try again. This time I added this image here, which is a much more complex image. There's a lot of different variety of foods here. Let's see what we come up with. Okay, so this one, he got some of it right. And I said list everything and he only listed a couple of things. Let's see if the other drafts. Okay, this one listed more. This one listed less. Okay, so sometimes this works well, sometimes it doesn't. So I was able to read the text from my thumbnail, but it wasn't able to detect everything. So I wanted to show you some of the limitations it has, but you also get Google Lens here. So if you click on the image, it actually goes and finds that image. So this is something I got from this website, Invito Elements. It's a stock photo library. It found all the different websites that use that. That's why it's nice to use Gemini if you're used to a lot of the Google tools. So that was Google Lens. It's been around for some time. Now, the next way you could use it is using this prompt here, which lets it basically help you with grammar, spelling, and proofreading. So all you have to do is I've completed my blog post or my article or my paper, and then put in the topic, proofread the entire post for any grammar errors, typos, awkward phrasing. Additionally, suggest any stylistic changes to improve the overall tone and voice of the piece and then paste in whatever you wrote about. Now, if we go back to our settings and go to extensions, you could also use this as a travel advisor. Because if you look here, basically half or three of the five extensions right now are related to travel or driving with maps, hotels, and flights, right? So if you have all these on, what you could do inside a new chat, make sure these are all on. I could start with a super simple prompt, helping create a travel plan including flight and hotel to Las Vegas for next week. If you have a driving plan, he also knows that he has Google Maps. So it's looking like it's using Google Hotel. Google Flight just finished over here and it's going to give me a very specific plan here. If I come down here, all the flights right here, they're all listed from actual airlines. I could click on any of them. It's going to take me to the website to sign up for this. You also have the same thing for hotels. So let's say I wanted to stay at MGM. I could click that. It's going to take me directly over here to check out or visit the website. Now, another extremely powerful extension is this YouTube extension. Now, this could actually find and summarize the videos, and this has YouTube vision. So it could see what's in the video too. It's not just taking the text from the video transcript. 
he actually could see what's inside of a video. So here, this is one of the examples that they showed us. So help me find a YouTube video to care for a specific plant. And then right here, I bought a, this is the name of the plant. So it wrote the prompt for me. These are some examples that always show up and refresh here as you use Gemini. Let me just send this out. I don't know anything about this. So let's see what we come up with. So it's using the YouTube extension here. These are the examples and these are the videos that he pulled up for us. Now look how simple this is. I'm going to say summarize video one. And here's the summary of that video in just quick text. And remember, we could have a follow up prompt. We could again have all these options here to go ahead and export it to our docs or to sheets or share this text. Super useful. One of my favorite ways to use Gemini is this YouTube extension. Now, if you want to master Gemini and other useful AI tools like ChatGPT, we have an entire Netflix style e-learning platform that we've put together. And about the past year or so, we've been able to add 20 different courses for all kinds of different use cases. So if you want to learn about ChatGPT or custom GPTs, this is a text to image platform called Dolly. If you're an entrepreneur, we have a ton of courses for entrepreneurs and creative entrepreneurs as well. So all of that is included for one price rather than selling you individual courses. You just sign up. There is a free trial. You get a monthly subscription after that if you decide to join and you get access to everything plus all our new courses. So this is really the ultimate tool to stay up to date with AI with new courses coming up every single month. We also have downloadable resources, a community section and a whole lot more. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to learn more about that. As far as Gemini, check out the more advanced video on Gemini Advanced that shows you all the functionality that has to offer. I'll link that in the description with all the other resources. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.